Well, if you got your Bible, go to the book of Acts, where this is our sixth week. Can you imagine that? Six weeks in Acts, and we're still in chapter 4. So chapter 4, um, starting at verse 23, I'll just do a real brief recap. I'll, I'll always do just a real brief recap to catch us up where we were. But uh, Acts is the history of the church, the very first church. And uh, it's a church that sets the bar for us. You understand? It's, it's the, it's, this is the kind of church we need to att- try to reach. Not, not the one down the road, not the, the best church you can think of, but this is really the church that we need to aspire to be, to, to, to pattern ourselves off of, because this is the closest church that's closest to Jesus. These are, most of these people that are in this church have been eyewitnesses of who Jesus was. And so, boy, you got that kind of influence, and then the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the miracles, the, 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 I want to be like that, don't you? I, 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 we don't need dead church. It won't save your children. It won't. That, it, it'll, it'll wear off. And we don't need formalities. We don't need a tradition. We need a move of the Holy Spirit. And that's what happened in the first church. It was a move of the Holy Spirit. So that's what this this whole book's about. But the recap was Peter and John had healed that crippled man. They were thrown into jail. That was the first first time the church ever been persecuted. And they were thrown in jail for overnight because they didn't want to try to have a trial. It was too late that night. So they put him in jail overnight. They tried him the next morning. And they stood in front of the high priest and the Sadducees. And they boldly proclaimed Jesus. And Peter flipped the tables on him. Remember that? He flipped the tables on him. And he said, this man was healed. Because remember, the Sadducees didn't believe in healing. And, and they, just, they, just, they just messed up their whole theology. Because here was a man that was, that was lame for 40 years. And he was up and jumping up and down and praising the Lord. Everybody knew the man. They had seen him sit outside the gate for 40 years. So they couldn't deny it. And so they were pretty upset. And, uh, and so they said, well, by whose authority did you heal this man? They wanted to know. And Peter flips it on them. And he says, the same Jesus that you crucified that rose from the dead. And see, they didn't believe in resurrection either. So, boy, he really made them a whole bunch of mad Sadducees because they were sad, you see, Right? That's right. We always got to throw that in there. So that's one of them dad jokes. Um, but, yeah, so he threw that in on them and said, he said, they, they, this same Jesus that you crucified. And, and I love that, don't you? And, and they saw them. They saw Peter and, and John and thought, well, these are just ordinary men. They're not like us. We've had the best training. We've had the, the best schooling. We've... We're, we're a class above, but these are just ordinary fishermen that work hard. And, and, but they, they marveled at their boldness. I'm telling you what, when you, have, when you get full of the Holy Spirit, you'll, something, you, you need boldness. Boldness will come. We need to be bold for Jesus. Amen? But it comes through the, through, the, through the power of the Holy Spirit. They recognized their boldness, and they recognized that they had been with Jesus. Who you hang out with matters. Amen? We need to hang out as much as you can with Jesus and the Holy Spirit and with the Word of God. Because they said that. They've been with Jesus. How many times could... Are, do you hang out with Jesus and the Word enough that when you talk to somebody, they know that there's something different about you, and they say, Justin, you've been with Jesus. Yeah? Wouldn't that be something? Isn't that good? They just know there's something different about you. Kelly, you've been with Jesus. But that's possible. That's, it's possible to spend that much time with the Word and with, and with Jesus and the Holy Spirit that, that when you run into somebody, they know that there's something different. Megs is one of those people. Amen? To her work, I, uh, you know, she, did, she had another nail in her tire. She gets nails in her tire all the time. 
So she pulled in, rolled into the post office. She called me. She said, Dad, I've got a railroad spike sticking out my tire. And I was like, yeah, right. She said, no, I really do. And so I, come, I went over there, and, and she did. She, by George, she had a, a nail that long sticking out of her tire. I don't know where she got it. But while we were there, um, two of the coworkers came out, and we started working on the tire, and we started talking about Jesus. And we started inviting him to church. And, and she said, she called me two days ago and said, Dad, it works. She said, I don't know what it is, but they keep asking about you and church and everything else. I said, it's because of Jesus. But that's what we got to be about. Wherever you run into somebody, be about Jesus. And so they, had, they messed all the Sadducees' theology up. And then the Sadducees, they said, well, we don't know what to do with them. They gave them a strong warning and said, don't you ever preach in the name of Jesus again. Don't do it. And the apostles, they thought that they would go off in the corner like they used to. Think about it. The, you know, the, these are powerful men. The Sadducees and the, and, the, and the high priest and that whole court, they were powerful as far as what man thinks is powerful. And they thought that, well, these guys are going to go off and cower in the corner. But they didn't. Peter and John, they stood up and said, we're going to preach no matter what. Do you want us to obey God or obey you? And so they, they didn't know what to say. They warned them again, and they sent them on their way. And so that's where we're picking up tonight. That was a quick recap. So at verse 23 of chapter 4, here we go. As soon as they were freed, Peter and John returned to the other believers and told them what the leading priests and elders had said. And when they heard the report, all the believers lifted their voices together in prayer to God. O sovereign Lord, creator of heaven and earth and sea and everything in them, you spoke long ago by the Holy Spirit through our ancestor David, your servant, saying, Why are the nations so angry? Why did they waste their time with futile plans? The kings of the earth prepared for battle. The rulers gathered together against the Lord and against his Messiah. In fact, this is what happened here in this very city. For Herod Antipius and Pontius, Pontius Pilate, the governor of the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were all united together against Jesus, your holy servant, whom you anointed. But everything they did was determined beforehand according to your will. See, no matter what, what happens, it's all God's will. Amen? And now, O Lord, hear their threats, and give us your servants great boldness in preaching your word. Stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through your name of your holy servant, Jesus. We're going to stop right there and talk about that. That's a lot, isn't it? So they were freed. They came back. Peter and John came back. They testified. They said, can you believe this is what they did? They hauled us in. They jailed us. They hauled us in before them. They tried us. They told us. They warned us. And so they knew that persecution was coming. Every believer knew that persecution was coming. This, is the, the, this was like the start of the war. If you really want to think about it, it's the start of a war. And it's, it's, it's a real war. It's not a fake war. It's, it's not someone making fun of you for your fish bumper sticker. This is they're going to drag you out of your house. They're going to separate you from your family. They're going to they're going to oscillate you or isolate you from the others and they're going to they're going to they're going to tear down your businesses. That's the kind of persecution. Right? That's the kind of persecution in the know. So this is what the Holy Spirit showed me. This is what we need to learn. See, the word of God is for today. It's for today. This story is in the Bible for a reason. It's not just a story. This is history. You've got to understand that this is history. Vin, uh, Victor told me that one time. He said, he said, they're not stories in the Bible. They're history. And I agree with that. It rang true in my spirit. It's history. It's there for a reason. And, and so when persecution comes, because I'm telling you, we're living so close to the end times, persecution is going to come. Persecution makes the gospel grow. You're going to see that. The gospel is going to grow. It's going to explode. But when it comes, look what they did. The first thing that they did. This is what the Holy Spirit showed us. It showed me this is what we need to do as a church. 
They didn't stand what they didn't do. I start with what they didn't do, okay? They didn't stand around and talk about how bad the situation was. Amen? Do you know what I'm talking about? I'm guilty of this. I don't know about you. Anybody else guilty with me? They didn't stand around and talk about how bad the situation looked. They didn't speculate about all the bad things that could happen. Well, if I go out and preach, you know, let's, let's, let's get a team together. Let's get a security team together. Let's get all these things together. And we're going to, when they start busting in, we'll, we'll blast them, boys. They didn't do that. Do you see what I'm saying? <laughs> what are you whistling about? I see that. <laughs> they didn't give hate speeches about the, what the Sadducees did. Can you believe what the Sadducees did? I can't believe they would do that to us. Can you believe what that politician did, that so-and-so? Can you believe what they're doing through our laws and through our country? Can you believe it? They didn't waste time doing that. That's right. That's right. So we can't sit around and talk about the bad things. we got to take it straight to the Lord. That's what they did immediately. You see that? The first thing that they did, that's the things that they didn't do, but the first thing that they did do, watch it, the first thing that they did, it said all the believers, say all. All the believers lifted up their voice in prayer. We need to be lifting up our voice. If you're really concerned, if you hear something that you know that's, that, that, that's coming against the kingdom of God, the first thing you need to do is start lifting up your voice in prayer to God. Not stand around and talk about it. Not give it, not give it place. Because I think a lot of times if we fixate on the problem, we become part of the problem. If you talk more about the problem than you pray, you're the problem. Oh, that's good. You should write that down. That's right. So they, the, all the believers lifted up their voice in prayer at one time. And then second thing they did is they prayed the word. If you really believe in the power of the word, you pray the word. And, and, and confirmation is in the word. Our answers are found in the word. Everything that we have is found in our word, in the word. They said, look, they, they, the Holy Spirit brought it back to remembrance. You've got to remember, these are Holy Spirit-filled believers. These aren't just any believers. These are Holy Spirit-filled believers. And the Holy Spirit brought it back to remembrance because normal people wouldn't say, oh, you remember what our ancestor David said. You see what I'm saying? They're doing exactly what he said. But I'll tell you what, I, I know the Spirit of the Lord because I can see it today. Let me give you an example. Let me bring it to you for today, okay? Let me put this, put yourself right here because we are a church just like they're a church. And when you start seeing wars and rumors of wars and famine and racism and lack of love and sexual immorality in the church and knowledge increasing and billions of people traveling faster and faster in a generation that's always learning but never accepting the power that can make them godly, the Holy Spirit brings that back to my remembrance and I say, Lord, you remember these things because I know you're coming and you're coming quickly. So, Lord, let me be ready. That's how we pray. That's how we, should, that's how we should be. When you're led by the Holy Spirit, when things happen in the world, it should quicken in something inside of you and say, I see that. I know the Word says that. Do you know what I mean? That's what they were seeing. And that's exactly what happened. When Peter and, and John came back and said, this is the report, they said, well, the Word says that it's going to happen. Let's pray. So they prayed, they prayed for all the, all the believers prayed with their voices. They all prayed with their voices out loud, and they prayed the word, and they looked for answers in the word. But here's another thing that they did. They prayed this. They said, pray, God, hear us. Pray with expectation. Do you really believe God's listening to you? I believe it. I believe with everything in me. God hears my prayers. You can say what you want, but I know He hears my prayers. And I'm going to keep saying it and saying it until I know that it, and when you proclaim it, there's something inside of you that rises up. Oh, boy. 
alarm going off there? <laughs> Is that you, cat? That's probably why we can't have anything nice. Sherry. That was good. Did you get him on camera? You should have got him on camera over there. <laughs> Anybody, will, they'll do anything to get on camera. Look at him. <laughs> no, I'm just picking. I'm picking on you. That's good. But we need to pray with expectation. God hears us. Don't ever think God don't hear you. He loves you. If he loves you so much that he gave his son for you, he hears you. I, 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 I think so many times that there's so many people in church that, that think that prayer is just something you throw up to heaven. Throw one up to the big guy for me. I've had so many people tell me that. If you think about it, throw one up to the big guy for me. I already know that they think it don't make it. It hits the ceiling and bounces back down, they think. But I know my prayers go to heaven. I talked to the, to the, to the, I taught the kids on Tuesday. and We talked about heaven and what it, what it looks like. And, and, and the, the throne room of God. There's the 24 elders that sit around the throne of God. Right? And, and, and then there's the four living beasts that sits around the throne. Right? And John saw it. And, and John saw the lamb. He, well, at first it says that the scroll needed to be opened. And nobody in the heaven or earth had the power to open the scroll. But then, and, and John started weeping, and, but the elder leant down, and he put his hand on John's shoulder and said, Don't weep, look, there's one that's worthy. And he said he looked across, and there was a lamb that looked like he has been slaughtered, and that was Jesus. Jesus stood up, and when he stood up, amen, the power of God was there. But it said this, it, this is where I'm getting to, the elders all fell down, and they had a harp in one hand, and they had a bowl in the other. And it says the bowl was, the, was filled with the incense of the prayers of God's people. My prayers go in a bowl that goes in incense that goes before God, and he hears them, he sees them. Amen? And so that's what you've got to understand. Keep reminding yourself, I, 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 God hears me. He hears me. I thought about this uh, a few weeks ago, Tuesday, a couple Tuesday uh, Months ago, we pray, on, we pray the first Tuesday of the month is a healing service. One of the best prayer meetings you can come to. It really is. Even if you don't need something from the Lord, you should come just to hear the prayers and be with us. I believe that. But some of the best prayer is right there. And I remember a couple months ago, I was praying. And I don't even know why I prayed it, but I, I know now when, I, when the Lord, the Holy Spirit brought us back to remembrance. We was praying about things that we were going to do here. And I prayed, I said this, I said, Lord, remember all the work that we've done. Remember all the labor we've put in. Remember that we've been faithful to you. And man, I felt the Holy Spirit when I started praying that. Because sometimes you just got to remind the Lord. I, and he don't need remembering. He don't need it. He knows. But there's something about when you say, Lord, remember, because it makes you remember too. Amen. And that's the way these people were. Hear us, O Lord. And then they asked this, they said, in their prayer, they said, they didn't ask to be delivered from the fire. Sister Lee said that. Remember that? She said, well, you'll walk you through the fire. They said, help us to preach with boldness your word. Help us to preach with boldness. Not that you would take us out of this persecution, but help us to be bold through it. And then they said, pray, they prayed for God to stretch out his hand. I tell you what, it's, it's, that, that reminds me of Jabez's prayer all the way back. Remember Jabez? Lord, that you would put your hand upon me, that you'd protect me, that you'd go before me, you'd never, you'd never leave me nor forsake me. There's something about when you pray the, the hand of the Lord on your life. Because whoever he puts his hand on, nothing can come against them. I believe that. The Bible says that nothing can pluck me out of his hand. Amen? It's so good. And so they said, stretch forth your hand, O Lord, and, and, and see healing power. They prayed for healing power and miraculous signs, all to be done in the name of Jesus. Boy, I wish churches all across America would start praying a prayer like this. Think about that. So many people are afraid to go to work to say anything that they might offend somebody. They might offend them in the name of Jesus. 
We need to start praying for boldness. Amen? We need to start praying that God's hand would come upon us because that hand is the Holy Spirit. You can speak the name of Jesus, but when His hand is upon you and you speak the name of Jesus, it makes a whole other level. And then start praying for, for healing and power and, mer- and, and miraculous signs, not for you to get glory, but for Him to get glory. I, you know why we don't see healings in churches as much anymore? It's because we're not asking, we're not praying. We're going to the doctor before we pray. I'm not against doctors. Pray, then go to the doctor. Right? It's okay. It's okay. But they prayed and, and to walk it out. They prayed for the power to walk it out. They prayed for the light of Jesus to shine through them. They did. That's basically what they were praying. And the focus always has to stay on Jesus. Why I was thinking about that. Why do you pray for healings and miraculous signs? Because you can't argue with an experience. If you see somebody get healed right in front of you, you can't argue with that. And a man with an experience is never at the at the mercy of a man with an argument. Just like the Sadducees, they had an argument, but they were standing in front of a man with an experience that was jumping up and down who had been healed for 40 years. You see what I'm saying? We need that kind of power back in the church. But it comes through asking and seeking the Lord. Amen. All right. Verse 31. It says, After this prayer, the meeting place shook, and they were all. Everybody say all. All. I I do that every time because I want to make sure that you know that all. You see what I'm saying? It's good. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they preached the Word of God with boldness. We need this again. You see, these believers, I I, I would have to believe that many of these believers were there on the day of Pentecost. Wouldn't you say? At least Peter and John were there at the day of Pentecost. We know that. So, So I looked up that word fill just to see what it means, filled. Because I thought, well, they were filled on the day of Pentecost. Well, I looked it up again, and you know what it means? It's the tense of reduplicate, to refill. How about that? A refill. Just keep refilling. I believe that. I believe you just don't get just one pour. I believe it's a continual pour. As the Holy Spirit pours in you, you pour out through the power of the Holy Spirit, and you just keep getting filled and keep going out. Amen? You can't get enough. I don't think any of us can be so mature in the Lord that we can't search, uh, seek and ask the Lord, give me a, a, another feeling. Just fill me up again, Lord. Amen? It's good. Look up that word. Don't take my word for it. You look it up in the Greek. I took the time to do it. It means refill. That's so good. Don't ever stop looking for more of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Verse 32. This is where it gets a little different. It kind of switches gears here. It says, All the believers were united in heart and mind, and they felt that what they owned was not their own. So they shared everything they had. The apostles testified powerfully to the resurrection of Jesus, of the Lord Jesus and God's great blessing upon all, them all. There was no needy people among them because those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money to the apostles to give to those in need. For instance, there was Joseph, one of the apostles named Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He was from the tribe of Levi and came from the island of Cyprus. He sold a field he owned and brought the money to the apostles. This is just like the day of Pentecost. I don't know if you were here. If you were here the day that we saw that in Acts 2, were you here that, that, that night when we studied it? The same, almost the identical thing happened when they were filled with the Holy Ghost the first time. When the Holy Ghost fell and the tongues of fire were there and, and the place was shaken and, and great, that they preached the word, Peter stood up and 3,000 were added that day. But immediately, the evidence of a Holy Spirit-filled life, it brought unity to the believers. Did you see that? 
It said they were all of one heart and one mind. And then the Holy Spirit, he brings, when you, you, get, when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, he puts life on earth in its right perspective. They realize that the right perspective is, is they realize they didn't really own anything. They were just stewards. They're just passing through. And, and, and they understood that I'm not to be attached to this world. God doesn't care if you have some stuff. It doesn't, that's not what they're saying. But they understood that I can't be attached to it. I can't make this my main focus. This isn't my security anymore. This isn't what I live for. And it's the evidence. I think the greatest evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit is the, the, the uh, uh, taking a life that was living for me and then also now lives for others and lives for the Lord. That's the greatest evidence to me. It truly is. You, 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 can, have, you, you can say you have all the gifts of the Spirit, but if, if you stay a, a, a person that's just all about me and selfish, you need another filling, right? I, I, thought, I thought about that. The Holy Spirit brings generosity. And a knowing life is all about Jesus. It is. A life that, that says it's all about Him. Watch this. God so loved the world that He what? That's right. God so loved the world that He gave. He gave. The evidence is gave, given. It really is. When you love, you give. You give of yourself. You give of your time. You give of your substance. That's just the way it is. Uh, and then and, and so, so when the Holy Spirit is poured out and you have literally God's Spirit inside of you, you just want to give. You want to give back to others. You want to give of your time. You want to give of your service. You want to give of your substance. That's just the way it is. And you find it in the Scripture. You can't argue with Scripture. This is the most powerful church that walked the earth right here. But it can happen again today. I believe that through the power of the Holy Spirit. To reach the lost at any cost. That needs to be our motto again. I'm telling you. That's, that's going to be our mission, our church mission. To whatever it costs, we want to reach the lost. This is the first time that Barnabas is mentioned in, in the New Testament. And I, I, love, I love his name. How would you like to have a name, Son of Encouragement? Isn't that? That would be great. Son of Encouragement. Here comes the Son of Encouragement. I would love that. But Barnabas, Barnabas you've got to understand, we, we know the rest of Acts, and we'll see this coming up, but Barnabas is the one that opens the door for Paul. Everybody else is scared to death of him. It'd be like inviting Jeffrey Dahmer to come speak at your church because Paul was the one going out killing people and, and pulling them out of their houses, and he's the one that held Stephen's coats as he was being stoned. Could you imagine going and saying, and Barnabas was the one. He's the one that found Paul and said, this is Brother Paul. Because his spirit bared witness with him. And, and see, Barnabas saw what could be. He had a whole other level of faith. Everybody has a different gift. They do. They have different giftings. Amen? I love being around an encourager, don't you? It's so good when you get around someone that's an encourager. But, Paul, but Barnabas had that. And... and he had a what-if kind of faith, the kind of, the kind of faith that looks at somebody and says, God could use that person, not someone that says, boy, I know what they did. Think about that. That's big. That's different. And so I believe uh, what God can do. Barnabas was always looking at what God could do. When you, if you want to be an encourager, you need to start looking at what God can do and not what could happen. <laughs> because trust me, I'd have never started or done anything if I'd have sat down and made a list of what could happen before I thought what God could do. Do you know what I'm talking about? Because you can. I'm serious. You can sit down. Well, they'll sue me. <laughs> they'll, they'll call me this. They'll call me that. They'll call me this. But you know, Put all that aside 
and look at what God can do. What if God could reach all of Greene County? What if God can reach my family? What if God can reach my workplace? What if I can have a revival at the post office? Huh? Right? Yeah? What if I can have a revival at the Oaks? Maybe churches are coming, but, but there can be even a greater revival that comes. All one heart, one mind. Maybe at Hearthstone Ranch, there could be a revival there. Don't look at what could happen. Look what God can do. Little is much when God is in it. And it's all His anyway, so we might as well just let Him have it. Right? I think half the battle is knowing that God can. God can, just like uh, uh, Kathleen talked about this morning, the, this evening. God can. God can heal your body. God can. I know the list that could happen, but God can. And that's, wh- that's what Barnabas was. He was an encourager. God can. Amen? And I'll tell you this. If you're living for the Lord, if your heart's like, I want to serve the Lord. I want to do what's right. And you're up against decisions, and you can't make a decision, and you're like, well, I really feel pull- pulled to do this. You know what? I, I just want to give you some, some peace of mind. Just make a decision and go for it. Say, Lord, this is the direction I'm going to go. If, if you're not in it, stop me. I did that today. The, the board did that today. We, we, I found some bleachers on the, on, on the Internet. It popped up on my phone. I wasn't like been there looking for it. It popped up. And I said, Lord, if it be of you, and I put it out there to the board, and they said, well, if, if, you, it's, if you're good with it, we'll go with it if, if, if you look at it and see. And I said, and I, when I, was, I called the guy, I was headed that way. I was going to go an hour and a half that way to look at it. And I, and I prayed when I got in the truck. I said, Lord, if it's not you, stop it. About 10 minutes later, almost all the way to town, he called me and said, I've already sold them. He, I was supposed to come, you know, and he, 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 I said, well, Lord, it's not your will. But then I had, I met, I met a brother and we had lunch and we had a, we had a good conversation and I believe that God orchestrated it all for that meeting because that's the way he works. And that's the way you got to live your life. You got to say, Lord, this is, this is the way I want, I'm, 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 I'm prayed about it. I'm living my life for you. You know my heart and don't worry about it if you mess up. Because he'll make your wrongs right. He will if your heart's right. Amen. The what if kind of faith. Barnabas was that kind of man. I want to be that kind of man, don't you? You do, Cherie? Amen. That's good. There you go. (laughs) That's good. The what if kind of faith. I love it. All right. Let's just do one more spot and... uh, and then we'll call it a night. Is that okay? Is everybody all right? Okay. Acts 5, 1 through 11. We'll just read that and then go over that real quick. It does shift gears. This is the part I thought we were getting to, but it doesn't. This shift's a little bit different. It says, But there was a certain man named Ananias who, with his wife, Safari, sold some property. He brought, he brought part of the money to the apostles, claiming that it was the full amount. With the wife's consent, he kept the rest. Then Peter said, Ananias, why have you let Satan fill your heart? You lied to the Holy Spirit, and you kept some of the money for yourself. The property was, the property was yours to sell or not sell, as you wished. And after selling it, the money was all yours to give away. How could you do a thing like this? You weren't lying to us, but you were lying to God. As soon as Ananias heard these words, he fell to the floor and died. Everyone who heard about it was terrified. Then some young men got up, wrapped himself, wrapped him in a sheet, took him out and buried him. And about three hours later, his wife came in. Not knowing what had happened, Peter asked her, What was the price you and your husband received for your land? Uh, was this the price? that you received, your husband and you received for this land. Yes, she replied, that was the price. And Peter said, how could you two even think of conspiring to test the spirit of the Lord like this? The young men who buried your husband are just outside the door, 
and they will carry you out too. And instantly she fell to the floor and died. And when the young men came in and saw that she was dead, they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Great fear gripped the entire church and everyone else who heard what had happened. That's quite a story, isn't it? That's strong right there, isn't it? I'm telling you. You think about that and you're like, whew, we were just having a good time. <laughs> Everything was going so good, you know? And, and this has to happen. And But what you need to see is God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Because a lot of, a lot of people would, would take this story here and say, well, that fits in with the Old Testament. That's kind of like the Old Testament God of judgment and see that. I want you to see this. This is the God of the New Testament as well. He's the same God. Jesus was the same back then as he was in, in the Old Testament as he was in the New Testament, right? And, and, if, and if this scenario, think about this. If this scenario was to happen today in church because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, it could happen again, right? That'd be something. I think this is the key that we need to look at. Yeah, because you really start thinking about it. You're like, wow. If you really believe the word, right? I mean, if you're going to take the word for what it is. This is what I think the main point is. Might help you breathe a little easier. It's easy to lose the fear of the Lord. It's easy to lose the fear of the Lord. We have to keep the fear of the Lord in our lives. The Bible says this, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It really is. And so we have to keep them. I, have, I, I meet a lot of people a lot of times with this mindset. If I don't tell God, he won't know. <laughs> he knows, right? He knows. And, and so... I, if I have one thing I should, I guess I could say as a pastor is don't play God. Don't play with God. He knows. You can, you can, you can tell me one thing, and that's fine. I'm okay with it. I won't know. But maybe, maybe he'll reveal it to me. I don't know. But you can't do that with God. He knows. And, it, and what I see in this story, it wasn't, that, it wasn't that they held back money. That wasn't the big thing. See, I've said this before, and God don't need your money. It's not like, oh, heaven's bank is broke, and, and boy, I was, really, I was really counting on that money, Ananias, to come in. It wasn't that. Because a lot of times we start thinking that way. But God hates to be lied to. And it's the arrogance and premeditated sin you can't tell me there's not a consequence for premeditated sin. This might mess up some people's theology. Were they believers? I don't know. They were part of the church. They were getting ready to give money to the church. They did give money to the church. Think about that. And so that's what we got to remember. This reminded me of the, of the story of King Saul in the Old Testament. You remember King Saul? And God told him to wipe out all the Amalekites. God told him to do that. And this is the same God. And, and, and so Saul got, gathered up a, an army. You can look this up. I, I, I researched it. I thought, you know, I wanted to know. I preached a message called uh, The Danger of Serving God 90%. And so Saul gathered up an army of 200,000 men. And he marched. Remember Sherman's march where he marched from Atlanta to the sea? Well, it's kind of along the same lines. Saul marched for 50 miles wide, 900 miles long, and he killed everything in sight. You can read about it. And, and, but he did everything, and God told him to do this. But he kept the king, killed everything but the king, and he kept the choice animals, and he said, I'm going to sacrifice them to God. He started serving God his way, and he was trying to manipulate God. And that's what we can't do. We can't try to bargain with God. He's God. And, and, and Peter told her, told, told both of them, said, it's yours. 
you, you, it's yours to sell or to keep, whatever it was. But once you, once you made a promise to God, you may keep that promise. And so that's, that's, that's something, isn't it? Boy, that's something to end on, isn't it? <laughs> oh. I think the main thing that we want to take away from this tonight is to pray to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to be led by the Holy Spirit, always led by the Holy Spirit. I pray you're getting something out of these studies. These are good studies because this is, this is our history of our church, of the, the church. And I really believe it's for today. The Word of God is for today as it was back then. It's as fresh and as new, and it, it'll, it'll stand when the world's on fire. Amen. Always want to give an opportunity for anybody. If you would, just bow your heads with me in a minute. Ask the Holy Spirit what He's speaking to you. He's speaking to everyone. I know He does. He always, He's, he's always speaking. Sometimes it's whether we listen or not. And so tonight, if, if you're, maybe you're here, and I don't know everybody that's here, and, but, but if you're here tonight, you say, I've never surrendered my life to Jesus, and I want to do that. I feel the Holy Spirit here tonight, and I want to surrender my life to Him. I want to make Him my Lord and Savior. You can come tonight. You can ask Him, and it, it can change everything. I believe that. That's the God I serve. And then the second part is, is you say, I want, I want more of the Holy Spirit. I want boldness in my life. I want to be able to preach the Word of God with boldness. Speak the name of Jesus with boldness. And I'm asking the Lord to help me with that. I think if you want to pray, I think that would be a great thing to pray tonight. We need a church that has boldness. Miraculous healings and signs. I believe that. If, we, if you want to ask for it, the Bible says if you, if you want something, you ask for it. You have not because you ask not. And so I never, this is, you know, Jesus said that the, his house would be a house of prayer. So if you want to, come tonight and pray. Just ask him to show you. I'm going to pray with you folks. I'm actually going to pray for you.
He is. Let's circle up. Hope you get that mindset this week that God can. No matter what it is, God can. Amen? Don't look at what could happen. Look what God could do. You have to have stretch arm strong. Oh, that is a good person to stretch. <laughs> it's always interesting, isn't it? <laughs> huh? been a while. Has <laughs> anybody got a prayer request tonight? Linda? We have a lot of people out with, with sickness. There's a lot of sickness in the whole area, all over this country right now. So let's lift them up. Amen. Good. That's good. We will. Amen. Let's pray for Gary's report for tomorrow. It'll be a good report. Hmm. I think she'd like Mo, didn't she? God bless her. And we should pray for her. If she'd like Mo, we need to pray for her for sure. Anybody else? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's pray with the mindset that God can. Not the things that could go wrong, but think that God can. Okay? Expectation. Father, we just thank you and praise you for who you are. We come before your throne because we know that you can and you hear us, God. I know you hear our prayers. This is why we come together. This is why we gather. This is why we encourage one another. 
and we urge each other on. This is why we bring our, our requests and lift them up to you. And so, Lord, I pray each and every request that was mentioned here tonight, the health issues, God, all the different ones that need a touch in their body from you. God, you heard their names called out. You know where they're at. You know their need. Lord, I know that you're still Jehovah Rapha, our healer. I know you can. And so, Lord, I'm asking in Jesus' name, your son's name, that you would touch them, Lord, that you would give good reports where the reports are needed, Lord. I believe that right now in Jesus' name. God, I pray for the, for the, for the ones that are on making decisions to follow you, that, that, God, you would just cement it in them and, and, and pull them to you. Holy Spirit, that you would just keep drawing them to you and that through every circumstance you pull them closer and closer and, and that they would see their, open their hearts and their eyes to see that they're of their need for you, God. Lord, help us to reach our, our family and our friends and our loved ones and those around us and every name that's in that jar, God. We lift them up to you. These are our friends, our family, the ones that, that are, if they were to die, they'd be lost without you. And God, it's not your will that any man should perish. Remember that, Lord. I bring your word back to you. It's not your word that any man should perish, but that all should come unto repentance. And so, Lord, help us to be bold, just like the, the apostles that prayed. God, fill us with a great boldness for you through your name, Jesus, that we might proclaim your word, God. Give us the right words to say and the timing when to say it. Lord, I know that's not always your time to say it, so give us that wisdom to know the timing when to say it and give us full of, of, of your wisdom and your knowledge. You said if any of us lack wisdom, that we'd ask and you'd give it to us generously. You're a generous Father, and so I pray that right now for each and every one of us. Give us generous amounts of wisdom. There may be someone that may not believe in you here tonight. God, I pray that you would open their eyes, that they might receive. Give them a, take that heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh, God. Break the heart right now so that they might know that you are God. I pray that someone online maybe have requests that are watching, that you would be with them right now. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. We just ask that you would lead us, lead us as a church, lead our country. Lead every, every, we need you in every, every, every area. So help us to follow you and to listen to your voice. I pray a blessing on each person here, God. Through the name of Jesus, I pray this right now. A blessing on the families and each individual. I pray that right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, God bless y'all. Have a wonderful night.